This is the question we want to answer. What exactly does the equilibrium constant tell us about a reaction? And also, how exactly does it help us? So, in order to do that, we need to understand what exactly the equilibrium constant means. And that's the questions I'm going to answer now. <coughs> okay, so to make this easy, let's explain this from a mathematical perspective. And to start off, I'm going to write down the value of Kc, given the reaction little a, uh, a plus uh, little b, b, in a reversible reaction, little c, c, plus little d, d. Okay. And the reaction will be, the, the value of the equilibrium constant will be uh, the concentration of C raised to the power of C multiplied by the concentration of D raised to the power of D all over the concentration of A raised to the power of little a multiplied by the concentration of B raised to the power of little b. Okay, what is evident and what is clear is that the numerator consists of the products and the denominator consists of the reactants, okay? Now by now, because I've used the words denominator and I've used the words numerator, we have to understand that there's definitely maths involved. And where do you usually find a numerator and a denominator? Well, a fraction, right? Numerator, denominator, okay? And this relates to fractions, okay? So in essence, a fraction is simply just a ratio, okay? It's the amount of something divided by the amount of something else. And if we go one back, what the Kc value really is, it's just a fraction, it's just a ratio. It's just one number divided by another, okay? In this particular case, it happens to be that the, the numerator, the number on top represents the products, and the number at the bottom represents the reactants. So let's bring up the screen again. I'm going to tell you, let's think about a fraction, right? Kc represents a fraction. We're going to consider Kc greater than 1 and Kc less than 1. Okay, and when I mean less than 1, I mean it is between 0 and 1. Okay, now when, when will a fraction be greater than 1? When will a fraction be considered greater than 1? Well, a fraction is greater than 1 when the numerator, okay, so let, let's, let's just call it alpha and call it beta, right? Alpha is the numerator, beta is the denominator. When alpha is greater than beta, then the fraction is going to be bigger than one. In other words, the number on top is bigger than the number at the bottom. If I go here, I have alpha and I have beta once again, but in this particular case, alpha has to be less than beta. In other words, the denominator is bigger than the numerator. Now you tell me, let's look at a specific example. Let's look at, uh, let's just take the number 1 over 3, right? Is this number bigger or smaller than 1? You'll say, Matt, obviously it's 1 third, it's smaller than 1, okay? And this year, again, in the value of Kc, the top represents the concentration of products and the bottom represents the concentration of reactants. So in this particular case, we can clearly say that when Kc is less than 1, okay, when Kc is less than 1, it, it just sums it up to say that there's going to be more products than what there are, I mean, less products than what there are reactants, or there's more reactants than what there are products. If I flip this around, let's say it was 3 over 2 or 3 over 1, 3 over 2 or 3 over 1 is definitely bigger than 1, that's the top case over here, okay, and that is going to tell us the following, that's going to say, okay, there's definitely more products than there are reactants. Okay, so I'm going to sum this up because it's a fraction. You should be able to tell me immediately, immediately that looking at this formula, we would now define what a high and a low Kc is, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to write it down, and I'm going to give you a, a summary over here, and I'm going to say low Kc, and I'm going to say high Kc. Right now, high Kc means that the numerator is bigger than the denominator. Okay, and we'll go over the terminology related to this as well. A low Kc, let's just change that to a little c over there. A low Kc involves the following, right? It's a Kc value that is less than one, and a high Kc is a Kc value that is greater than one. 
Similarly, because it's a fraction, the numerator must be bigger than the denominator. And in this case, the numerator, numerator simply represents the amount of products. Uh, for a high KC, there's going to be more products than reactants. Now, this doesn't mean in the system. This means at equilibrium. Right? It means there's more products than there are reactants at equilibrium. For a low KC, there's going to be more reactants than products at equilibrium. Okay, and then finally, the terminology associated with this is we say when it's very close to zero, we say it lies, that case, that the reaction lies to the left. And for this one on this side, we say the reaction lies to the right. Okay, and lies to the far right if it's much, much bigger than one. So, so, remember earlier, I spoke to you about a reversible reaction. A reversible reaction is simply a reaction um, that can go both ways, right? And that's what we need for equilibrium. And then we spoke about what equilibrium is. Equilibrium is when the rate of the forward equals the rate of the reverse reaction. So, what, what it essentially means is the Kc value will tell us the moment it reaches equilibrium, the moment it reaches a rate of reaction where the moment it forms the products, it tends to break down and form the reactants. When it reaches that state, by that time it has already produced something. So it's either produced more products than what it's producing reactants, or it has produced less products um, than there are reactants, right? So which means you still have a, a low case, it will mean there's a lot more reactants that haven't reacted really um, when it reached equilibrium. A high KC means you're sitting with a lot of product and therefore you can take it out and it's more useful to you when you have a high KC. Um, right, so, that, so that's, that's what we've looked at now, understanding what KC is and, and understanding that it simply represents a ratio of how much products there are versus how, how much reactants there are when we've reached equilibrium. Okay.